Did you know that hibernation in space could be more than sci-fi only? The state of hibernation is close to what is called torpor, that is the state in which living organisms reduce their body temperature and metabolism. Hibernation has been studied in ground-based experiments by ESA's Science and Exploration Research Program, and the results are promising. With the current technologies, it will take astronauts about nine months to reach Mars. They will then spend about three, four months on the Martian surface and it will take them another nine months to return back to Earth. Each crew member will need about 30 kilograms of food, water, air and other essential consumables per day. On top of that, there will be health challenges. The astronauts will be exposed to microgravity for long periods of time. They will have to rely on their spacecraft and on their crew members, so there will be a mental challenge. And above all, they will be exposed to cosmic radiation, which has long-term effects on their health. Now, how about we avoid all those cargo and health issues and challenges by putting astronauts to sleep during their space journey? How about we send hibernating astronauts into space? Invisible to the eye, but present in vast amounts in space, is radiation. Exposure to radiation may lead to cancer, cataracts or damage to the central nervous system, but hibernation may be the key to keeping astronauts safer by mitigating the radiation risk on long space journeys. ESA has been funding a group of scientists studying the effects of torpor induced in non-hibernating animals. Hibernation or torpor as radiation protection tools is important as radiation are all around us. Every day, we are exposed to a variety of radiation on Earth, though there is no reason to be scared. The vast majority of it is naturally occurring and not harmful. The radiation protective effect of torpor on hibernator has been studied in experiments since in the 60s. Since the 2000s, hibernation has been artificially induced in non-hibernator such as rats. We had previously experienced centrally drug-induced hibernation in rats and show radiation protective effect on the organ such as the liver and the testicle of the rats after photon radiation during hibernations. Currently, in collaboration with Japan, we found that synthetic hibernation or torpor on rats also has protective effect following heavy ion radiations. Our current study showed a significant increase in survival and show radiation protection in some organs, which might be helpful for future space missions. Not just animals in the labs, but wild animals all over the world use this hibernation technique to keep themselves safe from environmental stresses. ESA research has been focusing on inducing torpor on mammals. Until not too long ago, hibernation was connected to snow and ice, and most definitely to cold temperatures. But then about 20 years ago, we found a dwarf limo, a small primate, in Madagascar that truly hibernates for eight months of the year and it can save up to 90% of its energy expenditure by doing so. It does get quite chilly in the Malagasy winter nights, especially when you're living in a tent. The main reason why these animals go into hibernation, however, is probably not so much the low temperature, but rather the lack of open water, as it doesn't rain for nine months along Madagascar's west coast, and this includes the winter months. And animals that hibernate not only save energy and lots of it, but they also save considerable amounts of water and are mostly protected from predation. So why should you be running around fighting to find enough water and food to stay alive and risk being eaten while you cannot reproduce in the scarce season anyway, which from an evolutionary point of view is the whole reason of living for animals. Since this discovery, we and our colleagues around the world have discovered more and more adverse conditions that animals survive by going into hibernation or daily or prolonged torpor such as droughts, heat waves, fire and storms, even floods. Now we know that not only ground squirrels, dormice and marmots hibernate, but also some of our closest relatives in the animal kingdom, the primates, in habitats that are generally considered hot. We also know that they can do so at body temperatures that are almost in ranges of what we consider normal life. But what we still do not know, how can they do it? What is the molecular basis? And what are the proximate triggers that actually start the hibernation or torpor process? 
the possibility of hibernation for medical use is of particular interest to the European research community and could transform how we approach many severe illnesses. Inducing torpor is already used in some medical environments, such as surgical theatres, to replace anesthesia in those patients allergic to anesthetic drugs. How can, how can we achieve this state of torpor in humans? What are the next steps to take? From all the knowledge we gathered in the, in the, from animal research and experimental research, the way the bear does might be well suitable for humans to enter torpor in a, in a wave-type fashion. So it may take a couple of weeks to enter torpor, then a pharmacological intervention may be need, might be needed, which may include also central nervous acting drugs to induce this state. The maintenance of torpor, which is in the longest period, needs to be understood, safely conducted, and may include as well environmental conditions like temperature in the pod, oxygen tension, uh, and other factors. And then the recovery or the arousal from, from, the, from the torpor needs suitable measures which can be changing in this environment or pharmacological also drugs to wake him up, so to say. And we should also keep in mind after this period of five, six, seven months of torpor, we need to recover also and get back to normal activity. And this may need some exercise and, and activities to, to be then really ready to land on the planet Mars, for instance. Hibernation does not only promise to have positive effects on astronauts' health during long-term stays in space, but it can also enable more cost-effective space missions, as there will be less food and energy needed during the travel. ESA is currently financing studies aiming at optimizing protocols for long-duration flights. The results so far obtained proved we are on the right path. Benefits are not only for astronauts, they also promise to reduce the negative impacts of anesthesia in surgical procedures here on Earth. Research into torpor induction is showing a strong potential for even a wider range of applications. ESA is looking to find a way of inducing torpor into humans for extended amounts of time, as well as creating hibernation-ready habitats and artificial intelligence support systems. By bringing hibernation technology from sci-fi into reality, ESA will be able to help many people here on Earth in the future. Do take the next step, the step into space. We did it already. Thank you.